Hey, this is Asbog the Gaming Orc, and here we have the One Shot series continued number two. I'm going to show you this first clip because it's just pretty amazing, even though it's a little out of order. Um, I end up breaking here, but I have a new stick, so I end up missing the break, which still counts as a one shot if I can still beat the guy in a one shot situation. And this is going to the reason why I want you to watch this video is just how the balls are going to clump up around the eight and how I actually win this game. So I broke down a little bit and I ended up buying a $10 queue. I bought the Czar queue for about $10. Uh, it, was, it was completely worth it. I've been practicing with it. So I'm a, as you'll see uh, when I play some of the earlier games, I'm playing with the Miracle queue, which is an older queue. And uh, right now the opponent's just hitting some balls and he's do he doesn't really have a lot of hard shots, but he can still win. He has to set the eight up by that side pocket to hit it into into the corner pocket there if he wanted to win. So the Zar Q allows me to hit balls easily in. Uh, it has really great aim, has great spin, great power, and I think it's the best bang for your buck. The next step up is the Galaxy Q, or um, there's actually one be slightly better stick than the Zar Q, but the recharge was about 660 on it, and the Zar Q recharge was about 440 or something like that, so it's in the 400s. So you can still play at uh, the Moscow table to still recharge your Q. But um, what I've been doing is when I play at the lower tables in Moscow, or Moscow even, is almost too easy with the Q now. So the guy created too hard of a shot, and he finally, he still, um, I'm stripes. He was able to hit all his balls in, um, but he failed, so he scratched. So this is going to be interesting. So I was like, how, come, how am I going to win this? Well, I'm going to break out these balls that are surrounding my eight ball. And you can see with my, my uh, Zarki, look at how long the aim is on this. So yeah, it's like, it, uh, the thing is, I'm playing this game a lot. So the question is, is, is this now a pay-to-win game? <laughs> because as you'll see with the miracle cue my aim is like terrible so I hate missing shots as you know like anybody hates just missing any kind of obvious shot you make, make a long ball shot it's really hard I put some backspin on that because I just want to bring that ball out uh, so I don't get blocked out by the 8 so then I just um, I break all those balls out of there so the guy's probably like crapping himself because he's like how could they do this so he did the absolute worst possible thing. He scratched on that shot there, and allowed me to get a, allowed me to basically get an opportunity to one shot him. So what I've noticed is um, I've been watching a lot of clips. If an opponent usually gets, if he leaves four balls on the table, I might not be able to one shot him. But if he leaves something like three or less balls, he better win the game, like because you're probably going to get one shot it. Um, a lot of my other games, I noticed. I end up uh, I, on my other YouTube channel. You can check out uh, the almost one shot um, with no commentary. It's where I actually get down to the eight ball, and just for whatever reason, I don't I don't uh, able to I'm not able to close out the game. I do these in real time. Um, I don't try to edit these shots down because I just want to just want you to see the whole aspect of the, the game because sometimes like the shot setup is important so I was trying not to scratch there and I didn't because I could easily scratch in that corner so now yeah I'm going to shoot that ball first because it's a lot easier to get than the other ball I'm hitting it softly so I can give myself a decent leave and I did not really leave myself a fantastic leave but fortunately I got the Zark you because you can see how easily I can line up these shots now with just how long that aim is also, it gives me plus nine seconds compared to the Miracle Q, which was, I think, plus four seconds. So the whole point is, like, if you're playing this game for more than ten hours, and I, I'm an addict on this game, uh, I play it. It's my casual mobile game, really, because I love playing pool. You know, I love PvPing. So here I go. My phone's running out of batteries, and here comes the one shot. And I really just wanted to highlight this video because of just how well. I was able to break those balls out of the beginning and how it kind of looked like I couldn't win, but fortunately he uh, scratched and allowed me to make a good run on him there. So here we go. My opponent is breaking, and I'm sorry I recorded a little late. He ends up hitting a solid in, 
and you can see the eight and the stripe there so he wants to be solid so he's going for the one which is a smart decision because he could come out and get that eight and then um, you have a solid and a stripe there blocking it so that that's another challenging shot like where his leave as at the side at the end of the table there you can see uh, he did not leave himself a very good leave but he does have a shot here and what I would do is I would spin that ball forward and knock out that eight off the uh, stripe there and he didn't need to do it but uh, I don't know if he got lucky or they just didn't show the roll you know because the game is a little bugged but and again he goes for a very difficult shot um, and that's kind of like um, the cut so he just gets kind of lucky he doesn't scratch or do anything funny but he's, got, he's getting down to two balls now, so he's doing pretty good. So he didn't, when you shoot a shot, like a wild shot like that, you sometimes have to because you just have a terrible leave, but you end up miss, you know, the next shot, you don't leave yourself another shot, especially when I have all my balls on the table. There's a very high probability that he's just not going to do it. So now it's my turn to one shot him. And now I'm playing with the miracle cue. So it's a terrible kill. You can see I'm playing on a lower table. I basically moved up to the Vegas table now. Um, but I'm playing at the Tokyo table again. Just because I ended up gambling. <laughs> One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to bet all your chips or get frustrated or kind of get on tilt with this game. And you just want to kind of keep your head together. And make sure you're taking your time when you come out of a game selection. Because they set you on the highest level of the game. And sometimes accidentally you can click it. level 29 though so you're playing against pretty much equal weight players at all times so the elo system is balanced I could go for the that that ball right there is the hardest one to get now you can see how that the blue ball there the two is blocking the other stripe so that's like a the only challenging shot and fortunately I was able to leave a good leave off of it I was able to bounce it out <coughs> I could combo those balls in the corner but this is really the only angle there's only a couple angles I can hit that uh, 13 or the 9 yeah the 13 there that ball I was just aiming at but I decided to switch it up and go for the corner pocket and yeah see I leave myself a, still a shot and angle on that other ball if I want to but Looks like what I'm going to do is try to roll this ball forward or just hit it normally to basically top spin the ball. I leave with just such a good leave on it, such a straight shot on it. See, I do want to roll it forward a little bit. And I accidentally roll it. See, I roll that forward pretty good. And with the with this cue, um, Still, I'm still playing with the miracle cue. My opponent is trying to respond. I hate when that happens. So you can see the aim on this cue is a lot lower than the other one. So you can see why I just... This one I got a part of a bundle, a $4 bundle. And then I leave a very good shot on the 8 there. See, when my opponent gets down to around 2, 3 balls, you should be able to one-shot him, really. And that's what he's down, 2, 3 balls. Because there's not enough. there shouldn't be enough balls in the only way you're really going to lose is if there's balls sort of clumped up or the eights being blocked, something like that, and then you have to maneuver and break that eight out or break those balls up. Game against a number number 28, level 28 here. So I do a top spin break, and I do get a ball in. What I'm doing now with my new cue, the Zar cue, is I actually I'm going for more. I'm learn, going to learn how to do more legitimate breaks. Um, there's a couple break, other breaks I do know. The top spin break is still very good. Um, I was watching a pool championship, and what I noticed, this guy was doing one of the top ranking pool guys um, that lost to the Filipino. What he would do um, is he would set the ball slightly off to the left. And just do a super power break on it. And this is a real life pool. And I'm still playing with the miracle cue. Sometimes I'll play on these lower tables if I feel like I'm getting 
I'm losing my touch a little bit. Like, I'll challenge myself, like, okay, I got to win five games before I move up and start betting more chips. So this, this is a good example of a game because you can see um, I really blocked myself in. I really got that, that 11 ball there, but now I've left room for the 14 to get cut, and I cut it out, and you see I did almost a perfect knockout there. Part of that shot is just lucky, but there's no way I would have to bounce that 11 out. There was no shot I had on it. I can't. It's too close to the rail to bank. So I have to knock it out, or I have to clear the balls off around it. And unfortunately, I did. And you can see I clumped those balls up. I only have uh, three balls left. So I hit that ball just right, and I knew I was hitting it with the speed to bounce it off the rail to give myself a few options. So this one is definitely the harder shot, and I can still rail bounce it, and I'm going to still bounce it and have a good leave. And this just is knowing your stick. So that's how I was able to make those two shots. I was able to just know the stick, know that the power I needed to bounce that ball off the rail. And that just comes with experience. And this shot, I probably want to put backspin to it. Um, little do I know the seven is there and I'm gonna block, I'm just gonna pop that seven right out. So I want to backspin it, um, just backspin it right. But you can see it's actually facing to the right. So it actually spins that seven out. And that's sort of the direction it was heading. And this miracle cube this is why it's really important to get a better stick. And this is what I'm finding out. It's just, I don't want to scratch there, so I'm looking. And so I just, you see how I aim it right off that side rail there. It's really important to get them just a better stick. Oh, my opponent, Muhammad, is breaking. I play a lot of people named Muhammad in this game for some reason. I think uh, pool is like a very uh, international sport, and it's like really popular in uh, Southeast Asia. It's still popular in the States, but not like a really popular. I remember even like Manny Pacquiao was actually getting in the pool for a while. He's going to quit boxing. My opponent uh, almost scratched there. He hit the ball way too hard. But he is trying to do it. I think he was trying to break those balls up. So you can tell how good someone is by the way they break, the way they leave. See this guy, like, when he broke, and I'm guilty of it too sometimes, but if you leave, half the ball should be on one side of the table and half the ball should be on the other side of the table. And so he missed that shot there. I don't have a great shot set up here, but I can still hit that ball in the middle. Oh, I'm going to go for this combo here. I just see it. See, when you get to the Vegas table, you're going to have to call all your shots. So you have to predict every shot. Yeah, that's where, like, leaving the ball is really important because you can't have a slap shot where I'm just, like, randomly flying a ball out and trying to hit a ball. Because if my ball goes in the wrong pocket, I, I lose my shot, ball in hand. And then against those players, uh, you have to win in one or two shots. You have to win in a one shot or definitely a two or three shot. I notice a vast majority of the games now that I'm playing, I win in two shots. Unless the ball is being jammed, balls are being jammed up or something like that. That's why important. it's important to have a good break. So I've played against opponent, like you'll see in the almost, if you go to my other channel with the almost one shot, you'll see me play against this lady who actually purposely scratches the break to uh, have me break so she can try to win. And I end up almost beating her through a one shot because she just missed the break. And that's what I'm telling you. Like people are so get so good at this game. If you miss once, you'll lose. So the pool champion uh, that I was watching, he ended up winning. I'll link it in the description. But one of his records, he ends up winning uh, something like back in the day in the 80s. He won like four or five tournaments in a row which was like impossible at the time. And these guys, they're so good that they can win four or five games just from breaking uh, in real life pool. I noticed they don't do as many crazy cuts like they do in this game um, for obvious reasons because they're just very good at leaving. Another thing they don't do a lot is they don't do crazy English spins. Um, and they, but they care, obviously they care a lot about leaving the ball. I want to backspin that ball as far back as I can. 
so I get a nice clean shot in the eight. Just leaving a good angle on that eight, because if I leave it square with the eight, I'll have to make a very difficult cut. And Mohamma missed two balls, or hit two balls and a miss, and it cost him the game. Like uh, in the professional pool game, the Filipino guy won 7-0. And the other guy, would, he missed a few shots, so it's not like they just one shot him the entire time. I try to do a really funny break here, and I end up scratching. But since I scratch in the break, if I miss the break or I scratch the break, it still counts as a one shot. And I'm playing on a lower table. I think this is where I am using, I'm trying to do um, a more sophisticated break. And you see that about half the balls on the table are on one side of the table, half the balls are on the other. There's no balls really clumped up. So... This is a really good one-shot situation. In other words, is really my opponent left a terrible leave. He left a horrible leave, and so now he's um, in a big pickle. He was fortunately able to um, do some kind of shot there, um, but he still failed to hit a ball. Okay, I thought he would, yeah, you can see he's solid. See, so he hit my stripe. So when I get ball in hand like this, so I am playing with the Zark here now, and I'm just playing on a lower table just to um, test it out. And what I'm trying to do with the Zark here is, I'm just getting used to it, but I'm trying to actually, what I'm trying to do is, when I get ball in hand, I try to hit the most difficult shot. Like this group, that group shot that's really together. I break it out because if I'm going to win the game, I got to break that ball out because I don't want my opponent to take another shot. So I really have the same shot here just by hitting that ball in that I would have done with ball in hand. So you can see I'm really trying to figure a way to get that ball out. And I just figure out like, okay, I got to break that ball out because I have no clean shot on it. And you can tell like I'm shooting with a really good cue. So I do a backspin shot here because I just I want to leave... So I'll do a backspin to the left, because I'm see I'm trying to break that ball out, and see I'm not used to my cue enough. I can't do it, so I have to hopefully get lucky. So I'm looking at that combo for now because I don't have another shot, or I can bank it in. The bank is diff difficult, but it's not impossible. Okay, I got lucky with the leave there on that, as it went around the eight. And now my luck seems to be running out, so I, I really only have um, a shot. I can only have a bank, really. So I'm going to have to either bank or do something here, and that's what I'm probably going to have to do. So I'm aiming up for a bank. I'm trying to... I want to roll that ball out of the way, and I was able to do it, but it ended. you see how it double-kissed it? And B, uh, BCA rules apparently when I when I was playing pool more professionally, if you you'd have to call a double kiss. Now in the other pool game I was watching, they did not uh, have to call that type of stuff. But you had to call. You didn't have to call like connecting balls. But in so that would be like normally a slap shot. But in eight ball pool here, apparently it's not. So I didn't leave a very good leave. But look at the merit, look at this cue. I'm able to like. The cut, the aim is amazing on this. Look at this. See, that's the power of pay to win, really. Because, I mean, that would have been such a difficult cut to make without having a good cue. Because I always have a, you can see the spin, the angle I always get on this. I get a lot more one shots with this cue, as you can imagine. Still getting used to the cues, so just playing lower tables. Um, the first game I showed you, I was playing on the Tokyo table where I got a one shot, so anything's possible. And I'm playing mostly on the Tokyo tables now, so upcoming videos, we're gonna, I'll show you Tokyo, and if I don't mess up, I'll get to uh, Vegas, and we'll keep going. Um, because this is the first time I'm playing with a real cue, so I have a feeling that I can actually go much farther in the game now. So I'm going to just bank that ball off, and I want to just roll it out to get to the other side of the table. See, I'm getting used to the cue, so I'm able to figure that out. 
Now, for solids, I want to go stripes because you see how the seven and I believe the, the three are together there. No, not the three, the um, six. The red ball there, they're connecting. That's why I don't want to be solids because it limits my shots. Just need to hit when, when you're comboing, comboing those balls, you just need to hit them very softly so they line up so you can get two easy shots in. Um, the 12 looks like a difficult shot, so I have to figure out a way to get that out. I don't see a clear angle on it right now. <laughs> we got the ten, we got the uh, 15 over there as well. Very easy to aim now with this. So I go across the table and I hit very nicely. It's very soft. So I am looking at that uh, 12, and there's just no clean shot on it. I can't do that in Vegas, so I would have to say I probably wouldn't pr put it there, but in Vegas I'd still aim for it. But look at, now I can bump that ball out because I can see where, look at how awesome that uh, the cue is. Because now I can see like, oh, I can hit that, hit that ball out, and it makes me look really good. Well, now it's just because I have a really good cue. Now I'm at risk of uh, scratching this shot. I don't want to, so I'm going to bank it, I think, because I'm just like, I think I can scratch it. And what I'm using, um, I'm starting to use more. You see those little dots on the table? Uh, you can try to aim at those dots and try to, that's how you kind of aim for bank shots. It helps you judge bank shots. So I just hit it really hard, and fortunately I got a good leave there, basically a perfect leave on the eight ball there. And I one shot at this guy who looks like a musician, Josh. <laughs> and you just need to hit that ball real softly to get in the corner pocket there. Last one shot game here. So my opponent, I see some people do this break, they put it in the corner pocket. When I break, I want to make it super consistent. You know, I want to put it in the exact spot with the exact power so I don't scratch. You know, and also I get the feel for the break that I'm doing. And with the difference, now that I'm with a different stick and I feel like I'm playing a lot better, um, especially when I'm playing better, I won't do the forward spin uh, ball, which is sort of a newber, newbie play, which is fine. But I actually want to break out those balls. And again, I want to get half the balls on one side of the table. See how those balls are really kind of clumped together where the break happened? That's not a good break. You're never going to get very far in pool when you have a break like that, because you're always going to have to try to make a difficult shot. And he, he missed a shot. Now, um, I'm, I'm striped, so you can see that one ball is actually pinned in the corner there. So somehow, someway, I'm going to have to break that ball out. There's a couple difficult shots here, but this is a good one shot uh, example, because I, there's no clear, obvious shot um, to get in there. So you can see here, I'm <laughs> I look like I can actually break that shot out. Ooh, look at that. I, I was able to do it. And I was able to combo that ball in, I believe, and then do a, and pop my other ball out. Now I'm going to hit this with the right amount of power, which is just around the second one. Now this stick is a little stronger, so I, I went a little too far, but the leave is actually really pretty decent. Now I have a, I'm, I'm looking at that ball right there, and I want to break out. And I want to put spin to the back. The reason why I'm doing that is because it's rolling right. And I was able to just scoop the, a couple of those balls out. Um, when I do a backspin like that, it's kind of lucky. It, I'm not that good to where I know exactly how that backspin is going to work. But I'm just thinking about the physics of it and trying to do what I can do. So sometimes I get lucky because I am breaking up a bad break, which happens a lot. And you can see, look, at that's exactly the shot I want to do because I want to break that eight out. So I just bank it against the wall. And you've seen a lot of these one-shot videos where I do that. I, I leave a night. I'm usually left with a cut, and I angle the cut to a very good uh, way to break out the eight, which is usually stuck in the middle of the table. Now, that was a very difficult, difficult cut to make. So what I'm going to do is just probably bank this perfectly around it. See, I'm ending it up around the second dash. And so that's usually a good judge of like, okay, it's going to roll, roll twice off a rail. So it had to bounce twice, I think. No, just once off the rail. I had to connect to a ball and hit off the rail and leave it on the other side of the table for me. 
And the same way I can hit the eight here, I'm gonna roll that ball out, but I put backspin on this ball. Now the ball is rolling right, so it's, what's gonna happen is it's originally gonna roll right, and then it's gonna mostly spin back. And if you, so if you think about that, if you watch that shot again, how perfect that leave is for the eight ball here, which could have been easily blocked by those other two balls there. I mean, this is per just a ridiculous leave. I mean, I could have hit that ball soft, that eight ball softer there, but I didn't need to. Hope you guys like watching the video. Like, subscribe, comment. See you in the next chapter.